Oh yes, oh yes, I've managed to eventually get hold of an FX Impact. What I've got here is the very latest Silver X FX Impact. This is uh, the one with the new uh, Smooth Twist X barrel, obviously in silver, 177, sub 12 foot pounds. I've been wanting to have a play with one of these for a long, long time. I actually even wanted to buy one of these and I still do to be honest. Anyway, full review coming up. Let's see if uh, we can make this as honest as possible because of this is a beauty. Hi there YouTubers, it's uh, Stevie here aka Catanonia and on this channel we do a whole load of air rifle and air pistol reviews as well as technology reviews. So if you stumbled upon me by accident, hit that subscribe button, check out our other videos and also check out the video description where I'll put links to the Facebook group where uh, we have a great chat, come and join us on there as well. However, today's video is all about the much wanted and requested review on the FX Impact and I have eventually got one. And not only have I got one, I've got the latest one as of 2018. This is the FX Smooth Twist X version, which is the latest one. Um, and it's basically, it's called the Silver X. Um, you can get the Black X, you know, being black body or silver body. Um, and it's got the Smooth Twist X barrel on it with the extendable shroud on it like so. Um, but this is an absolutely much, much coveted um, air rifle. Uh, they've been out for some time. Um, they are as hard as rocking horse you know what to get hold of. Every time they come up second hand, they are snapped up and for very, very good reason, I've been told. But I've yet really to play with one and I've been wanting to get hold of one for ages. So a massive thank you to my subscriber out there, Martin, who literally has only just got this and then gone away for Christmas and let me borrow it for three to four weeks. Um, so yeah, thank you very much, Martin. Absolutely awesome. So, what have we got? We've got the FX Impact, right? So this has actually been around for quite some time, two, possibly three years now. Um, don't quote me on that, but basically, when bullpups started to become very, very popular, FX brought out this rifle, and lots of the bullpups in the early days had the cocking lever at the back, and basically FX brought it with the cocking lever up the front here, with the linkage all the way up, and the magazine still at the back. And, of course, it is a skeleton look rifle, um, and it's basically got Picatinny rails all over it. And it really took the world by storm, massively took the world by storm. Now, it did have a few problems um, like all new technologies does, and it did get a little bit of a bad reputation right at the beginning. But that's all a long, long, long time ago. That's all well and truly being solved on there. But you can get these, and I'm, obviously I've got the latest version here, which is the, the silver or the black X with the Smooth Twist X barrel system. But you can get these in um, a 177, you can get them in 22, 25, and free zero, you can get them sub 12 foot pound, you can get them in FAC, and obviously you'll get them in whatever your countries allow you to have them in there. Um, in the UK, they're imported at the moment by ASI. So I'm gonna give you some specs with this one. Um, let's just give you the basics on here because lots of people like to know it. Um, its weight unscoped is 3.2 kilograms, so it's fairly light. Um, its length is uh, 780 millimeters um, um, with, its, with the shroud um, retracted. You extend it out and you go up to about 920 millimeters. Um, what you've also then got is you've got a barrel size, and I'm just reading this off the cues here that I've got. Uh, barrel um, length is uh, 500 millimeters, um, and that's in your 177 and 2.2, but then that barrel actually goes up to 600 millimeters when you go to the 2.5 and 3.0 calibers on there. Uh, we are looking at a 480 cc uh, carbon uh, body bottle system on here, uh, 250 bar fill on that. And your shot counts, well, let's just be honest, if you're operating sub 12 foot pounds, 2-2, you're just shy of 500 shots. Uh, 177, not far behind that. Uh, but, you know, um, I'll leave some of these specs down as well, but if you are actually operating an FAC, your 177 out of the factory comes at 18 foot pounds and you get 180 shots. Your 2-2 is operating at 30 foot pounds and you get 130 shots. 
your 2.5 is operating at 45-ish foot-pounds and you're getting 100 shots and your 3.0 calibre is operating at a massive 82 foot-pounds and you're getting 40 shots from a full fill. So yeah, you can see, you know, the buddy body system on here really, really works well. Um, but like I said, you can get it all in major calipers. And the other big selling point about this is the fact that the barrels can be swapped out. You can um, release some screws up here. Um, you can slide the barrel out. So you can slide your 2.2 barrel out and put a 3.0 barrel in there. You change the pellet probe over, you change the barrel. You can buy those kits. Um, obviously, just make sure that you've got the right barrels and that you're not going over 12 foot pound if you're limited to that. Check the video out. I'm leaving up here all about that that I found on the crown. But you can swap the barrels out on here that's a major big selling point on this and the other major big selling point about with the fx impact is the fact that you actually have multiple power settings so the first place that you get the power setting is here which is basically the hammer spring tension and you can dial that up and down there's uh, i think about nine or ten settings on here so you can dial that up and down now on the front here there's a little screw i don't know if we can see in here i'll leave some pictures but this is like your valve pressure as well so that's equivalent to the the newer crown where it has the second dial where you change it uh, which is the pellet probe uh, size it's very similar to that you remember the impact came out before that and that's there and then underneath in here in you know, behind the trigger um, and I'll try to leave you um, some pictures for that under there is your regulator setter for those guys that are FAC now obviously when you do get this in the UK and I can only speak for the UK here but when you get this from ASI then it is all set up with anti tamper so you can't actually mess around with it and for those wondering that if you can take this as a, a sub 12 foot pound and turn the dials up and get it over 12 foot pound no you can't again your importers will set these all up all like RFDs do so that the maximum it can go is 12 foot pound all you can do is dial it down so there's a lot going on with this rifle and this is a rifle that I really really wanted um, I've always set my heart on it but anyway let's uh, move around the whole rifle and just show you the ins and outs of it like we normally do we'll do our walk around so at the back we've got um, obviously a fairly it's a solid butt plate here now this little screw you can undo the screw and you can move this butt plate up and down so it's got a bit of vertical movement but you can't um, twist it twist it you can't give it any cast on there but it's like I said it's all very skeleton at the back here is where your magazine goes in now your magazines are um, absolutely humongous they're the large shot magazine systems now I know there are some aftermarket smaller ones with lower capacities but these magazines are basically the same as the FX crown magazines um, and let me give you the specs on them in in 177 you've got 21 shots in 2.2 it goes down to 18, in uh, 2.5 it goes to 16, and in 3.0 caliber you go down to 14. But it's the classic old turn the magazine all the way around, put the first pellet in backwards, and then start loading your magazine up normally. Uh, they rattle around and you have problems sometimes if you clip the skirts on there. So the magazine system, uh, once you fill the magazine up, then basically it's the black side pointing forward, and it goes in at a slight angle, there's a groove in the mag, and then literally you just slide it in and it goes into the backlight. So now obviously this magazine is empty and the rifle's empty. Now it has an empty magazine uh, system where you can't actually cock the rifle, fi uh, finalize and push a pellet through because it has a blanker in here. So you can't load blank with it set up like so. So it's a nice little feature about these magazines. However, you do have to load them up that certain way. But basically you can then take the magazine out now it can be quite a tight fit getting that magazine in and out and I'm just going to fire that action off um, nice and safe and let that go. So basically there's your magazine loading system up here. You do up here uh, get your two screws where you can then use to remove the barrel um, but I'm not going to go into that into this video at all. Underneath here we have um, our regulator pressure gauge so obviously this is a fully regulated rifle. There's the gauge for you. Obviously that will be set up sub 12 foot pound. You cannot mess around with that on there. Um, so that's moving across, we've got a skeleton type stock, we've got um, a metal uh, or plasticky cheat rest here. Um, it's not an ambidextrous cheat rest, it's meant for right handers, um, but I know you can get aftermarket ones with these by just removing some of these screws. And we move forward, basically then we've got the barrel that moves all the way through and we'll come on straight onto the cocking handle. Now the cocking handle is the classic FX biathlon type cocking handle that we're all used to, um, nice and easy, 
fairly simple to pull out. It's got a definitive um, pull on it and a spring system on it. You can feel that. And you'll see this block here move. Um, that's the whole block. It's very skeleton look and feel this is. Uh, you feel that block forward and then it's literally just pushed forward. Very simple to use. We have a resettable safety catch here, which you can just set to safe and to fire. It's got a little bit of a click to it, but nice and simple. Um, we have that on safe at the moment. And then we come down to the trigger. Now the trigger, you can adjust this trigger. It's a full two stage trigger. You can adjust the blade angle, uh, the first and the second stage. And it has got, you can feel on this one, it's set fairly heavy, which I like. And you've got a very definitive feel the click second stage before you pull it. Um, and what we'll do is we'll just set that to fire. And then we've got our definitive click and I do like this trigger and then fire very definitive you can feel that there's no jerking you've got a definite there's the first stage there's the second stage as with all FX triggers fantastic triggers they really are and I love the way that you can adjust them you can do some adjustments through here the rest you may need to remove parts of the stock to do that then what we have at the front here is we have the actual um, fill gauge here. So obviously when you're filling up, you're checking this gauge here um, to get you up to whatever bar. And this one is 250 bar. Okay, so on the bottom, we then have the fill uh, cap. So this is where you fill the rifle. And there's a little cap which you just pull it off like so. Uh, you keep that nice and safe. And it is a standard Foster's fitting on here to fill up to the regulated pressure here. Now. Be careful, this has quite a deep recess in this fill port here. Um, they do supply you obviously with a Fosters, which is a long reach Fosters. Make sure you use that, don't use a standard Fosters, otherwise you'll be getting in there and you'll be using your fingernails trying to get it out. And trust me, it's happened to me once at the range and it's quite embarrassing. But the whole of this area here, all of the actual breech mechanism up here, all of the, the actual main stock is a beautiful um, CNC'd aluminium grade uh, material absolutely fantastic and beautiful put the cap back on to keep that nice and safe um, we've forgotten the trigger grip here the trigger grip here is a full AR 15 style trigger grip um, you can change that out swap that out to any type of trigger grips that you want nice and simple so that's a really nice feature as well lots of people like to customize their rifles we have a small Picatinny rail at the bottom here that a lot of people like to fit short stubbies, um, bipods on there. Um, you'll find a lot of people that have to go and spend four or five hundred pounds on an Atlas style or a clone. That all fits on there. Um, so it is a very, very small one, but it's purely, let's be honest, just designed for the Picatinny, for the Atlas uh, bipod style um, uh, bipods on there. Then obviously we've got the 480cc buddy bottle system. Um, and we have yet another Picatinny rail across the side. Uh, we have one on the other side as well. So Picatinny rails galore. And um, Across the top, we have a standard Picatinny rail across the top on here as well. So you can fit on any of your scopes that you want. And um, talking about scopes, we've got a Discovery up here. Um, again, I'm seeing lots of these uh, first focal plane Discoveries. Brilliant price. I'm going to have to do some reviews. This is a VTT uh, 6 times 24 times 50 first focal plane. I'll you leave some pictures of it um, in the video as well. And then moving around, then we come onto the barrel. Now, like we said, this barrel is a is the latest Smooth Twist X barrel from FX. So that means basically the barrel is nice and smooth, and then the last inch or so, two inches, they put a twist rate on it, and that just imparts that final twist and gives that pellet the extra stabilization and accuracy that it needs. And being the twist X version means you can actually change out the barrel linings and put different twist rates in if you so wish and you can get them off FX so you're fully up to the modern systems if you get the latest uh, black or silver X version. Now the shroud will actually just pull out now word of warning you either fire it with the shroud fully in or fully out you should not be firing it halfway according to the owner's manual and it does make quite a noticeable difference let's just fire this off I don't know if you're going to notice this on camera but that's with it, uh, that's with it um, retracted and bring it fully out. Obviously a massive, massive distant, uh, difference there. Um, that is seriously like me shouting and me sort of like just talking normally. That is a big, big difference. Um, to be honest, I don't know why they do that. Why don't you just have it all the way out? The only thing I can think of is that literally uh, it just helps with storage. Let's turn the rifle around. Um, there's not much else to go on about here other than the hammer spring tension in here, which basically is a very simple way of adjusting the power, which is really, like I said, changing the hammer spring on here. And then it's this part here, which is the valve adjustment on here. 
um, it can get very complicated but you can change that as well and so this gives you your major power changes this gives you your fine level power changes but realistically sub 12 foot pound it's pretty much wasted on you especially when you can't actually change the reg in here because it's all anti-tamper but that is basically it yeah we've got more picatinny rails on all around it all picatinny rails absolutely galore but a lovely lovely rifle some say it's pretty some say it's ugly i'm in two minds as to which one it is on there but uh, yeah a lot a lot a lot and um price wise on these uh new all of the versions of these new have always been around the 1700 pounds uk price um, they don't really change that much. You may get better deals on there. And second hand, they still fetch a decent amount second hand. Whenever I've seen these come up second hand, they have been snapped up quickly. Everybody wants one of these. Um, um, yeah, they are absolutely beautiful. Beautiful looking rifles. If you're into this style of thing, it is completely new. It took the market by storm and it has even started to form some of its own copycats, clones like the RTI, RTI Priest and something that have come along and tried to capture this part of the market. But is it as good as everybody says? You know, it's made by FX, so I expect the trigger to be good. I expect it to be accurate with the Smooth Twist X on there. I expect high shot counts out of it. So I've got a lot of expectations for the rifle. So what I'm going to do is we'll do our usual. We'll take it outside. Um, we'll stick some pallets through it at our usual 25 meters in our backdoor range. Um, we'll see how it goes. Unsorted pallets, just check the skirts are okay. Put them in the magazine, fire them off, not taking too much time, rest it, and then we'll come back and we'll have a look. And I'll, I'll tell you my honest thoughts of what I really think of the FX Impact. All right, guys, so we're outside. Uh, yeah, it's a lovely winter's December day in the UK. I got my cup of coffee. Um, we've got the FX and we're out at 25 metres as usual, you know the score. Uh, 177s, we're going to do some Sovereigns, uh, we've got some Diablo Fields and then we've got a couple of Heavies as well. We've got the JSB Heavies and I've also got some uh, Crossman Heavies as well. So we'll see how we get on, we'll do 10 shots at each and see what happens. Okay, now onto the AA fields. Okay, so now we're going to do the JSB heavies. Crossman heavies. Now for a bit of fun. It looks like the AAs looked better there. So I'm going to go to the AA Diablos. Uh, full 21 shots, centre target. Let's give this a go. Okay, so I'm back inside and really, what did I think of the FX Impact? And like I said, we stuck some shots down it. We did some sovereigns, not too bad. I dropped one of those sovereigns, but you know, look at, looking at these, the, these are literally, uh, well, maximum here is a nine mil, nine mil, ranging between seven and nine mil. Now 25 yards, you know, it's, it's gonna be good on there. I have pushed this out to 30 and 40 and I'm getting very similar results as well out at that range, just slightly bigger groups. Uh, the AA Diablos, they came in absolutely brilliant. Um, down at the bottom here we've got the JSB Heavies, 
not too bad at all. And then the Crossmans were probably the worst out of them all, but then, you know, I don't shoot the Crossmans normally. And then I decided to put a full 21 shots out of this bad boy magazine in the Centre One AA Diablos. Um, and it's just amazing. That's a 7mm group um, out of a 4.5mm pellet. 21 shots on that, and I was not really taking my time. So, is it accurate? <laughs> yes, it's accurate. Is it accurate out of 30, 40 meters? Yes, it is. Um, I haven't got that on film. I have to do that out of range and it's difficult for me to film that. But yes, it is accurate out to that range as well. We've all seen the rifles that I've reviewed where at 25 meters, you can see big groups. This is a massive, massive, massively accurate rifle. Build quality. Yes, the build quality is second to none. It is fantastic. Yes, they did have a lot of problems when they first came out. Blackpool Air Rifles notably um, had a few issues and went public, but no, that it's all sorted now. Um, I've not heard any other problems, especially with the latest rifles. Um, I think it was teething problems. The build quality on this is absolutely fantastic. It feels rugged, it feels well manufactured. The CNC and the plastics on it are just fantastic. The shot cam. Yeah, well, at the end of the day, with this sort of any rifle nowadays that is regulated, it's got 480cc carbon bottle on it, you can expect a tin of pellets worth at two sub 12 foot pounds. You know, near as damn it, 500 pellets out of these things. Um, obviously, when you go FAC, higher ratings, that shot count will come down. But even at 30 caliber in 82 foot pounds, you're still talking 40 shots. That is unbelievable. So it's got a great shot count. The looks. Well, this is a double-edged one, the looks. You know, I like it, because I like modern stuff. I look, I like the, the retro, the skin down look and feel of it. A lot of people think this is ugly as ugly can be. You know, to be honest, you know, to be brutally honest, I'm sort of 50-50 with it. You know, I don't dislike it, but I don't think it's the prettiest rifle out there. I wanted one of these personally myself because of the technology and the accuracy in it. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, the looks is the eye of the older, only a mother can love an, love an ugly baby and all that lot. But yeah, yeah, I'll leave that one for you to decide. I think it looks really nice in the silver. Some people really like it in the black as well. The trigger. It's got the classic FX trigger in here, fully adjustable. You can do anything you want with that trigger. Good, crisp, very, very predictable. FX make fantastic triggers. They always have, and this is no exception in here. It is probably one of the best. Picatinnies. <laughs> How many Picatinny rails do you want? One, two, three, four. Yeah, they're all over the place. You can put all your toys on this. You can have flashlights, you can have rangefinders, you can have bipods, you can get your scopes. It is fantastic. You can have them all set up for that. Um, and so much that you can put all of your modern accessories on there. However, obviously a downside is, is that if you've only got uh, dovetail uh, mounts, then obviously you're gonna need to get yourself some Picatinny mounts on there. What else have we got? The swappable barrels. If you guys are FAC, the swappable barrels is going to be really nice because if you can swap your barrels out, have multiple calipers on there, you can change the valve, you can change the power hammer spring tension on here, you can effectively have two rifles for the price of one. If you're sub 12 foot pounds, well, it's not going to be that easy. Um, obviously, you're only playing with sub 12 foot pound. If you do swap out, make sure you get the FAC rated barrels with the with the different pellet port uh, pellet ports barrel pellet port um, sizes to make sure that you're not losing power when you swap barrels. Um, yes, it sort of works for you, but realistically, you're only looking at 1772 and 22 barrels that you can have on there. But certainly for the FAC boys out there, the barrel swapping and pellet probe swapping, obviously, to go with it is a very good plus side of it, in, indeed. Um, they sell quickly, they hold their retail value. Like I said, these are 1700. Uh, UK pounds. I've seen them up for sale secondhand at 15, 16, and they've sold within days. So they do hold their value, hold it a lot. And you're also, because it's a very popular rifle with lots of simple parts you can take off, you're starting to see a lot of aftermarket products coming out for these, like replaceable um, cheek pieces on here, replaceable butt pads on here, little tools and stuff that you can put on. The fact that these are AR grips on here that you can change these out and put different things. There's a lot of customizable about this, and that's the nice thing about skeleton rifles with all of these bits and pieces um, it's such bare bones is that you can swap stuff out so there's a lot of very good things going on about this rifle so much so you know that I am still thinking about shall I buy one or not um, however there are some bad points and um, let me hit the bad points for you uh, in sub 12 foot pound is it wasted on you well you're gonna put it let's put it this way if you're in sub 12 foot pound you're gonna have that dial turned up to max 
you're going to have the uh, the valve set to whatever max it can be. The uh, importer ASI in the UK will set it to 12 foot pound, and that's it. You're not really going to change it. You're paying a lot of money for the change, the adjustability in sub 12 foot pound that you're not actually going to use. Let's be brutally honest about it. Do you really need all of that? However, if you're one of these people that want to spend that money and you want the latest and the greatest and you don't care about that, then so be it. It is still a cracking rifle. Obviously, in FAC, with the barrel swapping and the fact that you can change the power and the settings and tune it and harmonize it, as Ted Holdover says, then yes, fantastic. The mag size. Oh, oh, oh this mag size is humongous. 21 shots in 177, like I said. By the time you filled it all up, it's gone. It's gone dark again, <laughs> and it's time to go home. Um, yeah, it's it's huge. Now I do believe you can get some aftermarket magazines, uh, which are smaller that you can do, and that still fit in the FX on there. But the, you know the magazines, yeah, they're, they're absolutely huge. Uh, I think Andy Airgun Review said you put one of these on the side of your rifle, you'll never get a sunburn again because it just blocks everything out. Um, and of course, see, um, on the Crown, uh, that was a problem because you had to use high mounts on the FX Crown. Uh, leave the video for that up there somewhere on the impact it's not so bad because at the back but i found the magazine sometimes quite fiddly to get in here to get it just right to get the grooves lined up and of course the biggest problem i hate about these magazines is the loading system i always hate it i'm going to keep saying an fefx review until they change it the fact that you have to twist it all the way around put the first pallet in backwards which is very difficult because of you can then actually damage the skirts and then you've got to start feeding, dropping the magazines in and turn, drop and turn. It is so easy to clip the skirts of those pellets as you drop them in. Um, and especially if you've got 21 shots and a small fiddly 177s, it's so easy to do. Hate, hate, hate the magazine system. And some of the magazines, the springs just go on them. This one, the spring's gone it. it. It sort of works. And then I got another one in there that's really tight. And yeah, I just don't like these magazine systems. Uh, yeah, FX, please sort it out. Um, and also the magazines as well cost quite a fair bomb as well. Um, but yeah, you find out a lot of that uh, on there. The other bad thing about the FX is the price. Like I said, you know, pluses and good sides is uh, the downside is it's 1,700 UK pounds. Uh, that is a lot of money. You're paying premium money, but then you're getting a premium rifle for this. Latest technology, Smooth Twist X, the accuracy, the shot count, the machinery, and everything. But it does cost. That is a lot of money. However, it does have a plus side, is that the uh, because this rifle is so good, that when you come to sell it second hand, if you so much want to, then um, it keeps its price. <laughs> Which is really sort of like a double-edged sword. So, yeah, it's not a pro, it's a con, it's sort of a bit of both of them. That also does hit into the fact that these things are extremely difficult to get your hands on second hand. They are snapped up immediately. I've seen one in the shop and it was in there literally two hours before the next customer went in. Bang! I'll buy that off you. Um, really buy that off you. Um, what else is there? And just as I said, just be careful of the very, very early ones of these uh, because of there was um, a few problems with some of the very early ones uh, where they had a few leakages and um, a few issues with pellet probes, etc. on there. So if you avoid the early, early ones, the very first models that came out, you should not have any problems at all. But overall, what do I think of the rifle? I think it is an absolutely quality, quality rifle. Uh, a superbly made, beautiful machinery on here. Um, absolutely fantastic, super accurate, high shot count. It will outshoot most people. If you're FAC, it's got the adjustability uh, that you need on the hammer spring and the valve on here. Really, really nice. You can swap the valves. I'm actually, and you know, I'm 50-50 whether or not it's a beautiful rifle. I don't know if it is, but um, yeah, yeah, let's put it this way. Um, if I was after a second high-end rifle, yes, I would be up buy one of these. And I'll keep an eye out um, if one happens to come up that I'm lucky enough to get hold of at a decent price, then I will snap one up as well. Absolutely beautiful rifle. Now, I know a lot of you guys have got your own FXs out there. Um, they are selling like, well, they have and they are selling like hotcakes. So let me know down below in the video description what you think. Tell me your experiences with your FX. Um, tell me anything that I've missed out of anything. Tell me your good and your bad sides. Remember, this channel is all about giving potential buyers the full facts and not the, uh, the manufacturer's facts, let's say. So let them know what you think. What scope do you use yours with? What bipod do you use? 
I know a lot of you guys use Atlas, our Atlas clones on there. Let me know your experiences as well. Like I said, if you've not already, check out the video description. Join our Facebook group. Um, we do loads of extra bits on there, extra videos, giveaways on there as well. Um, check out uh, the Patreon as well, because I, I could really do with some more Patreons at the moment to try and keep this channel up and running. It is difficult doing it and keeping it going on a shoestring. So if you want to be a Patreon at the end, I think there's a Patreon link. You can click that. Um, that's great. Consider other forms. Again, check the video description out on there. And I will definitely see you on the next video. But um, FS Impact, it is a fantastic, beautiful rifle. Should you buy one? If you've got the money and you want a good, accurate rifle and you like the looks of it, yeah, go and buy one if you can find one.